You're listening to Drummer Daily, the only daily podcast just for drummers. Hey, if you want to get better at playing with a click track, and who doesn't, go to boomclick.net slash start today. Hey there, welcome back again for another episode of Drummer Daily. I'm so happy you're here. Um, so uh, today, I don't know, uh, I'm thinking about what I'm going to talk about today with you, and i uh, I don't know if this is going to be a very long episode or not. Uh, sometimes I think the episodes are going to be really short and then I get myself talking and I think of three more things to add and it ends up being really long. And sometimes I start wrapping these podcasts up and then I talk for another five minutes. Um, I, I'm very well aware of that. Uh, maybe you've caught on to that. And maybe if you don't, uh, didn't catch on to that, uh, now you're going to start catching on to it. So maybe I shouldn't have brought it up. Anyway, so today might be a quick a quick hit, we'll call it, uh, but it is this. I have uh, through my through my years, um, you know, I was in I was in band for a long time when I was in high school, even in middle school, actually in elementary school, I was in band. So I started learning to read music pretty early on, um, and definitely, you know, in marching band and things in, in high school, definitely had to read music, read sheet music, um, and. Uh, I think uh, yeah, in college I was in the commercial music ensemble, which was an interesting thing. It's, it kind of sounds like a Nashville thing, like having a commercial music ensemble. It's like uh, basically, it's like in, you go to school and you while you're, it's like an elective kind of thing. You get to pretend to be in a pro band, which is kind of cool actually. It's a Nashville thing. Anyway, we did read some sheet music there as well, um, and so um, a lot of sheet music in my past. Uh, and so, uh, there was a time, uh, I'm trying to think when it was, there was a time when I was touring when I first started touring a uh, full time. And at the same time I was playing drums at church when I was home. And sometimes, you know, I would get in on a Saturday night and I'd get up on a Sunday morning and go play at church. And so I had you know, no time, or I didn't make the time maybe, to listen to any of the songs um, and didn't know any of the songs until I got to church, you know, to play. And so um, that for me at the time necessitated that I'd start writing charts. And so I wrote my own kind of version of charts. So I would, I would, uh, uh, I've seen other, actually I've seen uh, recently a few other guys post pictures of their charts and that, it's actually very similar to what I did. Uh, it's kind of like a hybrid, like it might be a couple of written out notes, like, eights on the high, like verse one, eights on hi-hat closed. And then I would like write the kick and snare patterns with music notes, but just real freehand, you know, nothing really nice. But I, I quickly see what it was and remind me of what it was. Um, and then other times I'd write out full patterns. And for a while that basically, you know, saved my bacon, so to speak. It kept me uh, from, from completely messing up, you know, a Sunday morning and ruining it for everybody else. Um, well, then I took a break from touring and was home all the time. And I found myself, I'd listen to the songs, but I'd listen to the songs over and over again just to write the charts out. And then I'd get to church, uh, or sometimes it would, be for, it would be for gigs, and I would have all these charts and I'd have them over next to me, you know, on a music stand, and I would, um, I would, I would read the charts and things would be fine. But what I realized, a long story short, is that over time I kept reading those charts, even when I had worked, I was spending all this time learning, you know, going through the songs and writing the charts. By the time I finished writing the charts, I had memorized the song anyway. And, but if I had the chart at a gig, I would just stare at the chart the whole time. It's like, you can't help it. If you have a safety net next to you, you're going to use it. And I definitely did that. And so there came a time when I personally decided, you know what, I'm not going to use charts anymore because I... Um, I just stare at them and I'm not aware of what's going on around me and definitely like when I play in church um, Trying to be like sensitive to the dynamics and like make sure that like the worship leader doesn't want me to change what I'm playing This way or that way um, Or you know, we're gonna change something on the fly if I have my head buried in a chart I have no way of knowing that or you know I make dynamic decisions as a drummer sometimes You know if there's a part that's supposed to get really really big and huge But I look out and like no one is you know in the, in the congregation No one is there and they don't you know this is, I know that if you're going for studio drumming or something else, this may not apply to you. Uh, so I apologize um, if you don't do much improvisation with your set. Uh, but I look out in the congregation and I'd say like, all right, people aren't really there 
so to speak, in, in, in this song. So I'm not gonna, you know, blast them with a big, huge, giant chorus. Now, of course, I have, you know, the, the arrangement, you know, the kind of the way we do things at my church is we have that freedom to do that, but I know everyone doesn't have that. But for me, anyway, the, the, the charts became a detriment to me. And I realized that I didn't, if I actually thought about it, I really didn't need the charts. I was just, um, I was just using them as a safety net that I didn't really need. Uh, and since that time, I have not used the chart. I don't use charts anymore um, when I play gigs. I don't use charts in the studio. I make myself memorize everything I need. And it can be challenging at times, but I feel like my playing is so much better because I'm not reading something and playing at the same time. I actually don't have the ability to multitask that well. I can pretty much either play or read a chart, but I can't do both. <laughs> so I've really enjoyed not using charts. And so basically my, my message today is here's why I don't use charts. And that is why I don't use charts. It's because uh, they just became a safety net for me. I'm not saying you shouldn't use charts, but I am saying, as with everything drumming related, be intentional. So if uh, you're using charts just because you always have, stop for a minute and think, do I really need to use charts or do I? can I do without them? Will it improve my playing uh, if I don't use charts? Uh, and for some of us, that's definitely the case. It is for me, I know. All right, so this is a little short of an episode, but I am so glad you joined me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. So thanks and goodbye.